Good evening and welcome to Surefire Wednesdays. My name is Chef Jonathan Collins. And my name is Bailey Collins. And Dakota will be joining us in just a minute. We'd like to say hi to everybody in the Outdoors Nation that's watching yep. tonight. Over 12, over a dozen different feeds. Yep. We want to get to each and every one of you, but we want to start off by telling you some of the exciting recipes we oh, got. Yeah. We got a lot of great recipes tonight. My brother's cooking up a great margarita He's tonight. cooking a margarita? He's I hope he doesn't cook a margarita. Actually, he's got simple syrup, which he cooks. Okay, so he's cooking a he's margarita. Cooking. Okay, okay, okay. I stand correct. I eat, drink some. Okay, what are you making? I am making what I call a blueberry bl bone blitz. That's a tongue twister. So that's triple B. Blueberry, blueberry bone, bone blitz. blitz. It sounds like it might be good for you. It is. So it's basically just a drink that's full of calcium, protein, everything that's good for your bones. It's going to be delicious. And so you... <laughs> So, quesadillas. yes, that's right. Quesadillas. Honestly, the thing about making quesadillas is that everything that you need, you don't even need to put these ingredients together. They smell, they look, and they taste amazing. And they can all come from your garden as well if you got one. That's right. So you got to plan ahead. But the most exciting thing and the centerpiece of tonight is this beautiful mule deer. Yes, beautiful <laughs> mule deer. So we want to start off by thanking our good friends at Excalibur. Because actually oh, yeah. the boys and I, we haven't hunted mule deer yet. Our mule deer hunt is coming up this fall. But this beautiful mule deer, we start out by thawing it out. And uh, one of the things I, you know, the first thing I noticed when I pulled out this mule deer is the, the incredible smell. Now, if you've ever butchered anything uh, that you've killed, you'll know that that has that, honestly for me, yes. it's a beautiful smell. It smells fresh, like it smells pie. delicious. Dakota? Hello everyone and welcome to Surefire Wednesdays. We are excited tonight as you were talking about that mule deer, right? Eh? Well, the mule deer, first of all, all you have to do is just look at it. It's it smells so red. It's That's so beautiful, yeah. so, so fresh. fresh. That's the thing. Oh, that, so Now, a couple of the side recipes that we're going to be doing, we're going to do a pico de gallo. Now, a fresh salsa, fresh tomato salsa is the perfect way to accentuate this. Yeah. And one of the things that's gonna go along with that is we're gonna do spicy black beans. Mm -hmm. So it's all kind of the classic things. We're gonna show you the way that we do our quesadillas. Yep. I don't even have to check the recipe book. This is, we do quesadillas once a week. Yep. The thing about quesadillas uh, and the, uh, the roots of them is you just take whatever's fresh, yep. whatever you have available to you, and all of a sudden it becomes a carrier. For I mean, I, I don't wanna say that we're pros at it, but when we had a beach restaurant down near where we live right now, yeah. people loved our quesadillas with our homemade salsa. People just fell in love with them. They couldn't understand how we got them so golden and brown. <laughs> so I would have loved to make uh, flour tortillas for you tonight, but there's only so many recipes we can do. So you wanna make sure to start with a good flour tortilla. And uh, I'm gonna get started a little bit of prep, but we are always gonna start on Surefire Wednesdays with our smart food. Uh, so this is Bailey's recipe, this blueberry bone blitz, okay? <laughs> it sounds good to me. Um, and one of the things that I was impressed, he, he was like, well, we." because we almost didn't have almonds. We got the almonds here. Yeah, He's like, I have to have the almonds because we need calcium. And I'm like, okay, I know that you make almond milk, <laughs> but they're not out there milking the almonds. Like, would you, calcium, yeah, really? Calcium, and sure yeah. enough, there's yeah, a great source of calcium. calcium. And not only that, there's calcium in everything I have here from the kale to the dates, the raisins, even chia seed has yeah. calcium in it. Very nice. nice. 
Yeah, when I was when I was doing the research for this drink uh, this week, I was surprised at how many things actually do contain calcium. Yeah. You like to think of that as stuff like milk and cheese and all that is the only things having calcium. That's but why it's called bone broth. That's why it's called a bone broth. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing we're gonna start with tonight with this is actually a rather simple drink. I call it a I keep wanting yeah, to call it a juice, but it's really a smoothie because you yeah. make it in a blender. So uh, the first thing you're gonna do is I like to start with my vegetables. They're always at the bottom so that they get a good uh, blend there at the bottom. The only th you're gonna want about half a cup of kale. Kale is amazing for you. Kale is full of a vitamin that's vitamin K. So vitamin K, what vitamin K is for is Actually, I, to be honest with you, I never even heard of it before I started researching this. But vitamin K is essential for uh, pro uh, synthesizing protein. That's fascinating. Man. Yeah, so that's another thing that's great about this is it's full of protein. So after you put the kale and all that in there, next thing you're going to want to do is toss the rest of your, your ingredients. Let me have a look at those babies. These are look dates. Those, man. So these are... These <laughs> Whoa, are look at that color. They're perfect, eh? These, uh, these dates are great because if you ever, I don't know if you've ever had dates, but dates are really sweet. So they're amazing. If you tons have, of fiber. If you, oh, yeah. Tons of fiber, but if you have kind of like a bitter kale and collard greens and stuff like that, you, sweeten it up. you gotta throw them in to sweeten it up. The recipe says three, but I like throwing in a couple more. And same thing with raisins. Raisins have a lot of sweetness to them. They're also, like Dad said, full of fiber and lots of good stuff like that. And make sure you buy pitted dates, and if you don't, make sure you take that pit out of there. You'll get a nice little crunch there. <laughs> and you're They're like bullets yeah. in a war. <laughs> yeah. And your, uh, your blender might have a tough time doing that. Not this one. Not this one. <laughs> this one I'm going to do it. Next thing we're going to do is that might look like a lot of almonds, and uh, but I like almonds, so I'm literally just going to dump those in there. Mm. Almonds, okay. like Dad was saying, are full of calcium. I think I have a number, actually. So a cup of almonds it contains around 38% of your daily amount of calcium. Mm -hmm. So this drink, what I went for with this drink is to try and get your full daily amount of calcium into one drink. You know, breakfast, everything like that, so yep. that you don't have to worry about it. You know, following the food guides of Canada, you want to yep. make sure you get all that. And Dad had the great idea of adding blueberries oh, yeah. to this drink. This is amazing <laughs> for, first of all, flavor. And antioxidants. And antioxidants. So yep. I'm just going to dump it. The reason that we're showing you these smart foods is because obviously everyone's out there at this time of year. You've probably already done all your training. You're already on your elk and your sheep hunts and your antelope hunts. You're already doing them, but this would be a great thing when you're doing your training to get all that energy back, to bring yourself back up, right? Get all these yep. great food aspects. Good for energy, good for muscles, exactly. general nutrition, See, digestion. That's, that's another thing. If you just got done a, uh, done a workout, things like almonds and dates and all these blueberries, they're full of, first of all, water. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to rehydrate or anything like that, this is another one that is safe to toss in the fridge and it won't lose too much of those minerals. So those are, it's a great one to make ahead of time for whether it's after a, a workout, after a hike, anything like that. So I'm adding a, a third cup of Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is amazing <laughs> because first of all, it's thicker than just regular yogurt. So it adds a great texture to your smoothie. Then after that, I'm gonna take milk and I'm gonna add one cup. One cup of milk right into the smoothie again. I think milk. with all those nuts in there, you might need more than a cup, but you'll see. <laughs> well, try it. I'll add, I'll add a little more milk. Milk oh, is, man, uh, milk is again, a great source of calcium. Uh, yeah. One cup of milk is one third of your daily intake of calcium. So you can imagine in this drink how much we're going to have in here. And I have got three days worth of calcium. We do, we do. Well, I also <laughs> forgot my chia seed too. So chia seed is great. I don't know if you've ever used chia seed or not, but if you take chia seed and you toss it in a cup of water. Let me have, have another good look at that, please. Yeah. If you toss it into a cup of water, you'll see how they almost start to expand and turn oh, to like gooey gelatin. And if you can think, as you as you eat that and it goes into your stomach, those chia seeds expand and turn into that gelatin. And it just kind of grabs everything along the walls of your stomach and everything is a great cleansing for your body. So I think that's everything. I keep well, forgetting now, stuff. Now, this is one thing we always say before you start anything. You know, you always eat with your eyes first. If something yeah. looks this good, and Bailey's talked about all those nutrients, let's yeah. see what it looks like now. Blend that baby up. I got a couple. I, I actually need a kick in the butt right now, so yeah. I can actually have some of that. That's not, I had one of these this morning, and it's great for energy as well. The most important thing when you're doing these, make sure that lid is <laughs> firmly affixed. Ready? Yep. Oh, look at that. 
that color. Oh, you know what we need? Ice. I'll stay with this. Grab the ice. So one of the things that uh, that you need, spent, I'll pause this just for a second. One of the things you need when you're uh, when you've got things like the collard greens and kale is you need a blender that'll really chop through it. So we don't want that kind of bitter texture. It'll take a little bit of time. So the reason Bailey's grabbing the ice is because we want to keep the temperature down. Of course, as you're blending, you're increasing friction. This will give us a little bit of liquid. Yeah. But the other thing it'll do is it'll protect those live enzymes and give us a really nutritious shake. Well, I would say... Now, if you are lactose intolerant, remember, just replace the milk, any of the dairy, with water, or it could be with your favorite. Almond milk? Almond milk? Oh, yeah, use almond milk. Yeah, they're not milking the almonds. Yeah. Put that in there. That, that looks, looks just beautiful. Yeah. Take a look at this, everyone. Look, look at this as I pour it out. Well, I oh, yeah. Some of that. Here, give her a try. You can see those blueberries in there, how they just brighten it up so mm. much. Almonds. They make it. We tested it earlier. We no almonds. almonds. <laughs> Cheers, man. Cheers. That's awesome. Mm. Mm. Tastes like health. It does. It tastes good. <laughs> really good. The couple things about it, first of all, uh, both the kale and the collard greens have been chopped up just to perfection. There's no texture. The, the, the almonds are just beautifully flavored. Mm. It's a great texture, and I, I, know, uh, I know me personally, I don't like things that are too, like, I don't want to say healthy, but like stuff that really kind of has that bitter taste and everything like that, this is really sweet. Those dates, the raisins, the blueberries have added really sweet, uh, sweetness stuff, to this drink, and it's amazing. That's good. So every week on Surefire Wednesdays, we're going to continue to bring more and more smart food. Yep. I'm going to use this opportunity to throw to a friend of ours, a Botec ambassador, uh, Rihanna. She's going to be going live tomorrow on the Botec Network at noon Pacific time. So that's 12 p.m. Pacific. And I saw her teaser, and yep. she's going to be doing dehydrated food, Real which food, yeah. which I have not done a lot of, so I'm really looking forward to that. And just as I begin this, uh, the, my cooking segment, yeah. I honestly, we are extremely envious today because our good buddy Nate, let's oh, yeah. talk about what oh, Nate yeah, got yeah. done today. Yeah, Nate Zielinski, who you'd recognize, he has a show here on the Bowtech Network on Monday nights that's all about scouting and prepping for your hunts. And he today, we just found out he filled his antelope buck tag. It only took him two, two hours. hours. So I mean, so he, he, he walked out and he was yeah. like, oh, "That's a nice one." We, and we are definitely yeah, it was like spot and stock. <laughs> we all got the message and we were like, "We freaked out." We are instantly so, jealous, man. So you I, know what you need to do? Yep. You need to go to Botech. Yep. You need to go to all the previous episodes. Yep. And everything Nate says yep. is gospel. Yep. you got to yep. write it down. you got to take notes. Yeah, so I mean, catch him on Monday nights, guys. He's on over 400 plus bull elk right now. So I'm sure he's definitely, when he heads out for elk, it'll probably only be a couple hours. Yeah. He's gonna and they're going to so. come. They, gonna, leave some for us, brother. Yep. Leave some for us. And they're going to come live to you if they can with a hunt. They actually were just out of service for this uh, for this hunt. But tomorrow morning, they're going to be featuring live to tape on the Botech News tomorrow morning. They're going to show you that hunt. And I, I mean, I can't wait to see I it. I can't wait to see oh, it. I know, see I know what I'm doing tomorrow morning. Yeah. Now, the key is, if you want to get notified, if you don't want to yeah. miss anything on the Botech Network, yeah. It's this great thing we can text you when we go live. Yep, yep. So all you have to do is text uh, or text watch yep. to 313131 or 313131 if you're in the United States. Yep. And if you're here in Canada, te uh, text watch to 393939. Great thing about it is you'll get notified every time something exciting yep. is happening. And remember, here on the Botech Network, you're getting exciting things. You're getting live hunts, you're yep. getting live cooking, you're getting live tips, and the yep. best part, it's fully interactive. Yep. So you can talk to the experts, to the yep. Botech yep. Pro staff, whatever field of expertise they yeah. have. Honestly, I mean, my, I mean myself, last week I learned so much about whitetail. I yep. was asking Jeremy Starks last Friday night, I was asking him all kinds of questions, yep. and I mean, 
Man, I feel like I'm already more successful. Yeah, honestly, this year. watch watch the Botech Network for a week and take notes as you go along, and you'll have two or three pages full of notes that you're yep. going to apply to your hunting season this year. Like especially like Coats at Whitetail, there's so oh, many yeah. different things that we're starting to do differently that we didn't do last year. Okay. Now I'm gonna get Cook in here, so let's have a quick look. So let's talk about flavoring this mule deer. Now, the mule deer sure doesn't need much flavor, but we're going to add just a little bit. And what we'll do is start off by just taking an onion and we're just gonna make a fine dice. So I start by trimming the root and the top, and then I'll peel that back. Normally it's just a layer or two, whatever makes sense based on how fresh the onion yep. is. And a sharp yep. knife if you don't want to cry. Yeah, that's the important thing. Now, I just want to say for a moment, we've also been joined and, and we've got uh, guests here watching on Instagram. So we want to acknowledge, say hi to our uh, friends on Instagram. Yep. I want to say thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, again, go to the Facebook and we will uh, and we'll get uh, answer as many as we possibly can. Keep in mind, there we go. Yeah, we're on Instagram. <laughs> Uh, keep in mind that we're trying to, to answer all these 12 plus uh, feeds, but we'll get yep. to your questions whether it's uh, now or after, after the broadcast. The broadcast. Yep. That's so, another uh, great thing about these broadcasts is they're, they live forever on the internet. You guys can go and watch this afterwards, cook dinner on Friday night using this exact recipe. Yeah. Follow uh, along. <laughs> so these, you know, the important thing uh, for us is we want to just give you some techniques that will ultimately make your job in the kitchen a lot easier. So all I'm doing right now is just preparing a dice. And you saw what I did is I just simply made some nice cuts from the root to the top. And you can see what I end up with is really quite a beautiful uh, what the French call brunoise, we'll just call it like a medium, a small to medium dice. Again, I'm running from root tip to the top, slicing through, and that motion, what you want is, rather than cutting straight through, to use your tip and just kind of drag it through, making sure that your knife is sharp, and then when you get that with your hands up like this so you don't cut yourself, slice through, and then uh, through you go again. So you can see that perfect dice looks beautiful now when we eat this uh when we saute that up with the mule deer the reason i want to make sure everything is roughly the same size is so that it cooks evenly but so i don't get any big pieces so that it's really nice and well mixed i've got a beautiful red pepper for me red yellow orange green whatever you've got toss a couple extra in Anything yeah. that's going to add flavor, yeah, peppers sweet, are sweet. A sweet flavor, too. Now, you know, uh, sweet, KC, sweet. you have all that stuff. It's nice to get a pop of sweet in there, too. Yeah, and of course, when we saute it, we're developing flavor. So this is the way I like to prepare peppers. You can see there's very little, if any, waste. It's easy to prepare, easy to get uh, from your refrigerator onto your stove. Is there anything I can do for you? Uh, no, we're just going to mm -hmm. keep plugging along here. You can select, a, you know what I need? I need a uh, jalapeno. So we're going to use two different kinds of uh, jalapeno. Now, for those of you who don't know, it's actually pretty cool. I'll throw the question out there uh, just in case there's anybody who really knows their jalapenos. So <laughs> do, you know, do you know what type of pepper a chipotle is? So come back to me, if you will. Yeah, I know you know. Uh, <laughs> And I don't know if I do. I don't want to be wrong. Yeah, we'll just wait for a viewer to uh, yeah. respond. You're like, yeah. So with those, it. with those sides off, now I can slice. And you'll notice those long slices are approximately the width of what I was doing with the onion. And again, that's because I want nice uniform cuts. Whoops. Um, and what we'll do, actually, back here, I'm going to turn the oven on. Got my, uh, my trusty... Uh, Fulgor Milano here, which is keeps me uh, in good shape in the kitchen. And I'm going to start with a little bit of butter. So I'm just going to use about a tablespoon, not too much. <coughs> tablespoon of that in. And I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil. This, is, uh, this temperature won't be super high. I'm not going to get a bitter flavor from that olive oil. I'll actually get some really nice flavor development. So I want to make sure that I've got flavors on every level. Also, the color from all of this is going to be just beautiful. Yeah, these peppers are so sweet. They're good. And, you know, the best thing, that's the thing, like, uh, quesadilla is this time of year. It makes so much sense yeah. because everything is in such great condition. Yeah. It's inexpensive. And, you know, this is even something 
let's say that you had a bit too much. This is something a lot of people ask me about. So can you reuse a frozen meat? So let's go through this just for a second. Okay. So once this has been thawed, it needs to be cooked. It cannot be refrozen. But what you can do is you can take and cook this and then you can freeze what you Cook cooked. <laughs> so what you can do, like I've got a big, I got, I got like about almost three pounds of mule deer here, mule deer. What I can do is I can make this side, anything that's left over, I can put in the fridge or I can put it in the freezer into individual bags, yep. maybe use it for lunch or dinner on another day. Yep. But keep that in mind. After you've thawed meats of any kind, any protein, it needs to be cooked before you can refreeze yeah. it. Okay, so now with all of these lined up, so do you know what this cut is called? Julienne. Julienne, yes, that's good. I'm learning, that's that, good. There you go. And so all you do is just line that up and you can see there, there comes that familiar, nice dice, easy to prepare. You can see the most important thing, as you said, sharp yeah. knife, right? What cut is that? What cut is that? That's real loss. Or that's like I said, a medium dice. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, let's push those up there, and then I've got the jalapeno left. Yep. How are you gonna cut the jalapeno? And well, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take. I don't want the seeds in. So the hottest part of the jalapeno is actually the seeds. I'm only gonna use probably about half of this one. So I'll set that aside. And so the important thing is to remove the seeds. Yeah. No, it's hot, brother. It's yeah, hot. All the juices are getting in my eyes. Yeah, no, it's really hot. Now, the upside is when we do saute it, it will mellow those flavors, okay? So the key is here now, I don't want to do great big dice. This is where we want to go fine dice. Really fine. Really fine, nice fine strokes here. You'll notice when I'm slicing a pepper that I don't slice on the skin. It's much, much easier and much easier to handle if you turn it over with that skin side down and just run your knife through evenly. And again, after we've prepared that julienne, we can now slice. Look at that, it's so beautiful. It smells so good. It's so fresh. And you know, that really gets to maybe the most important thing about uh, the Outdoor Chef, Surefire Wednesdays and everything that we're working on is that we know where our food comes from. Oh, yeah. We know that it's fresh, we know that it's healthy, and it's all part of a, a really yeah. athletic lifestyle. Now, you're gonna wanna see this uh, cameraman. Come on over here, we're going back. <laughs> Code keeps trying to set that camera down, we won't let him. So with the pan preheated, we wanna go in, look at that beautiful color. So those jalapenos are going in, the red peppers are going in, and that onion, we'll get all that in. Nothing's wasted, simple flavors. Now. This is the time, I give that a stir. This is the time where we want to get that salt in. So I've got, uh, you'll see I always use a really nice flake sea salt. And that's because I love the texture and I love the moisture content. So I'm literally just going to take and I'll just put that on. Now that salt is going to help to draw out some of that moisture. But more importantly, it's just going to get that flavor rolling. Now I'm going to add fresh ground pepper. You might say, well, why are you putting pepper in when you've already got the jalapeno in? The reason I'm doing that is because that fresh ground pepper, those beautiful little colored berries, when you grind it fresh, they release, release that oil, and that's layers of flavor, flavor, man. I'm telling you, you can't be without it. It makes me, it makes me stutter. Yeah. Layers, of, layers flavor. of flavor. Yes. We got flavor in here. So we're going to saute that, develop that flavor. That's and while we do, you know what? I think it's time for a little beverage as yeah. I continue to let's work here. More. Yeah, let's, let's Yeah, exactly. So uh, Dakota's got an inspiration. Now last week, if you missed last week, the boys and I were out at camp. So at the campfire, we did some really incredible uh, dessert. We did a beautiful uh, cornbread and peach because we were inspired Georgia peaches were in. And let me tell you something, there's nothing like Georgia peaches. And we've got a question here. Yes, Megan. Um, not a question, but I'd like the answer to what pepper the Okay. Uh, so the uh, chipotle pepper is actually a smoked jalapeno. So it is uh, this, there There you have, this is the beautiful uh, chipotle and that adobo sauce. This to me, I literally, I always have a can of this around. It is a beautiful, sweet and smoky heat that is mellowed. And this is hot, like, this is hot, hot. No, I, no, it, the sauce is just oh, beautiful. Yeah. So. Some of our, uh, all of our flavors today are gonna be tempered by some of that adobo sauce right. and some of that uh, chipotle. But never forget now, a jalapeno 
is a chipotle smoked. There you go. It's all you. And what we're going to do to cool down your mouths after eating all those jalapenos yes. and chipotles and that is we're going to do a sour peach margarita. So like you said, I was inspired last week because honestly, these Georgia peaches that have come in are just, they're breathtaking, man. They're, well, they're, they're, they I think I've so already, good. I've eaten about six of the uh, nine that I think I got here. So that's what we're going to be making there, guys. So I'll show you here. The nice thing is about mixing up flavors. So everybody knows a margarita, right? Yeah. But the nice thing is about taking something like this, you might not think of it, yep. but you're walking along and you're just thinking peaches, limes, Lime. and that simple syrup, tequila, yep. these are things that love each other. They're gonna go great together. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna be showing you something that's called a simple syrup. Now I'm sure you've seen it, you know, in the grocery store, it's red, sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's yellow, depending on the, the flavor that it is, but I'm gonna show you how to make one yourself and flavor it. So simple syrup is simply 50% sugar, 50% water. So come on over here, I'll show you. I've got one cup of water in a pan here. I'm gonna heat that up, bring it to a boil. Because what happens is when you drop that sugar in your water, you want that sugar to emulsify immediately. And then to flavor it with that lime, the whole reason we're calling this sour is because of the lime flavor. Now we're gonna do lots of lime, so it is sour. So you'll so see. So I'm gonna jump in there for a second because a great talking point you think about all these great flavors, you know, sweet and sour. Yep. You think to yourself, why, you know, we could just do peach, right? Nice thing about making it sour and yep. sweet is that your palate, your palate picks up uh, salty and sweet and bitter exactly. and all these things. And tell me, what do you put on the edge of that? Salt. Salt. So, I mean, you can do sugar, but salt really tempers all of that, all of those flavors. Well, it brings salt. it together, right? Yeah, exactly. So, as a professional chef, what you're always doing to elevate flavors is finding ways to appeal to the entire palate. Yeah. It's something, you know, if you've had something that's just super sour yep. or worse, super, super sweet. Too much. You need something, you need that acidity to cleanse yep. the palate, you need the sweetness to spark your yep. soul, yep. and you need that salt to remember your salt in the earth. It's the same way that you've seen us add in previous drinks, Angostura bitters, for example. That's basically like the salt and pepper of the drink world. You're seasoning your drinks with that type of thing. So to begin with, we're going to use fresh lime juice. If you can use fresh lime juice, that's the best. You'll see I am going to use a little bit of a concentrate, but our main juice is going to come from fresh limes. And you're going to want to buy yourself one of these reams. It's a simple tool. You can get them at the dollar store. And it just allows you to get all the juices that you possibly can out of that lime. What I'm doing here, guys, just so you know, um, while Dakota's making this drink, is I'm just going to prep the base for my spicy beans. And, uh, yeah, I'm washing that for you. I'll just turn that Yep, on. yep. Um, and so that's what I'm working on right now. So we're going to add about three fresh limes. Lots of lime juice. These limes are actually really nice. There's actually a lot of juice. Whenever you're selecting limes, I don't know if you've ever, have you ever had the frustration if you open a lime and you squeeze it and you're like, it's like one drop. It's crazy. Yeah. Always make sure to check the weight of citrus. So literally feel it and it should feel nice and heavy. Yeah, look at that, <laughs> look at man. That's like, one is like two. Come here, Easy. look at this. I'll do the next, the other half of this one here. Watch this. This is once you, how much juice you want coming out of your limes. Look at this. Not hard to make limeade out of that. Holy. Look at the amount of lime juice there. Now come on over here, our water's boiling. So once our water's boiling, we're gonna, so we had a cup of water in there, cup of sugar now, drop that right in. Get myself a whisk here. And I'm just gonna wanna whisk that together until that sugar completely emulsifies in the liquid. You'll see it happens fairly quickly. And you can see the consistency of that is quite viscous. And this is enough uh, simple syrup. You can make an entire, you can make five liters of simple syrup if you want. Put it in the fridge and keep it for the rest of the weekend or a couple weeks. And I'll show you the way that we're going to flavor this to make it a little bit more bitter. I'm actually going to add some lime zest in there. And of course, obviously that heat, because the water is boiling hot, is going to activate the oils in that zest immediately. Oh, if you could smell this right now, as soon as that zest hits the water, it just lights this room up. Okay, some lime zest, and then we're actually going to also add some lime juice in there as well. You guys like jalapenos and black beans? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Silly question. Just gotta ask mom. 
Oh, Lime uh, juice. Come on over here just for one second. Babe. Yep. So I'm I'm gonna approach these black beans a little bit differently. So I'm just slicing rings of this beautiful jalapeno, and that's because I want to create a different appearance. So I want something that's a little dirty, a little gnarly, and I'm telling you, this is gonna be a kick in the pants when we make this one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off. I got my uh, cast iron here. You'll see I use a ton of cast iron. That's because I love the way it holds the heat. I love the way that it cooks. So I'm just gonna get this preheated. Yep, I'm gonna show you guys here. Now you'll see we have that lime zest in there. Now you wanna get that out of your simple syrup so that no one gets a real bite. You'll see I'm using a stainless steel bowl here. You don't wanna pour this hot liquid into glass or something because it could crack it. So you'll see we're gonna drain all that out. Look at that lime that zest. Incredible. The smell, man. Oh my goodness, I love cooking. Don't you love cooking? Oh yeah. And so you actually, Bailey's right. Yep. You actually were cooking. I was cooking. <laughs> you were cooking, cooking a margarita. On the stove. I'm cooking a margarita. So this simple syrup, you want to take that, put it in the fridge, let it cool down. Of course, if you pour this in here right now, it's going to melt your ice, make your drink a little bit warmer than it should. So set that in the fridge. But I've made some in advance, so I've got about probably about half a cup of simple syrup, and you'll see, watch how much actually goes in. This is the sweet to our drink. And the viscosity. And the viscosity. Cool. Is you very can see thin. that. It looks, you know what it reminds me? It reminds me like of the of the texture of like motor oil. Exactly. So you get that nice thickness, it's very yep. rich. But the nice thing is, instead, if you were to just put sugar in here yep. and blend it, you'd have crystals. Ritz, then, yeah. So that's the great thing about simple syrup. Yep. It's very stable. Plus, it'll help the uh, texture of the drink oh, as well. Oh, definitely. I mean, if you just throw that, like you said, into a cold liquid, that sugar is not going to emulsify. You're going to get gonna melt in. With that hot liquid, it melts immediately and becomes part of the water. Now you'll see we have some silver tequila here. <coughs> oh, I grabbed the cup measure. That's what I would normally do. We're going to add about, probably about four ounces here into this amount. We've got some thirsty people in the crowd, so we'll add lots. I'm going to have to make a lot of quesadillas tonight. <laughs> Silver tequila, and then some triple sec. So the reason I added, this isn't in a typical margarita, but this is going to bring some really nice orange notes to it and add just a little bit more alcohol so that... The reason I like using sometimes two different types of alcohols is so that, you know, if you're having a big party or something and you want to get your alcohol content up and you have a large group of people, you're not flying through your tequila, flying through your whiskey. You have a few different types of alcohol, that, so you're not using all from one. So we're going to add about an ounce and a half of that triple sec. Look how full it is, just from the alcohol and the juice. Come on over here. I wanna, I'm gonna Lots of lime juice. We're going right? to take a two-second okay. uh, break to yeah, bring yeah. you black beans, spicy black beans. So I've got the, the cast iron heated now. What I've got is I just have onions, which of course, again, sautéed onions, beautiful flavor, and I've got those jalapenos. Now those jalapenos are going to mellow in flavor, but they're still going to be hot. All of that beautiful heat is going to be in there, seeds and all. Now, have a glance just behind here, and you can see what I'm trying to do. This is starting to, it's, it's you know, it's becoming translucent. You can see that it's beginning to sauté. But I don't want to stop this process process yet. I want to get more flavor, so I'm just going to wait. One of the keys to uh, to making sure that you get levels of flavor, impressive levels of flavor, is not to rush. Take it easy. Slow things down. What's that saying we have? Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. That's the way it is in the kitchen all the time. you got to slow things down to speed things up. It happens that way all the time. Make sure your pan is hot. Make sure your preparation is done. That's the way that you succeed in a restaurant, and that's the way you'll succeed at home. Let's have a quick look at this. This is already starting to saute, and I'm going to bring up all those beautiful flavors. I can hardly wait to taste that black bean. I'm telling you, man, it's going to be on fire, on fire, on fire. Come on over here, man. I'll show you some more of the drink. Now I've just started to work away on these peaches here. These peaches, I'll show you if you don't know how, all you want to do is take your knife and run it around the center of the peach. It's going to split in half. You'll notice one half always comes out without the seed. And I'm just simply quartering it into that drink. And with this one, I won't add another one, but you simply do it again. That comes off. Pull that seed out. Bob's your uncle. Away you go. Now, like I said, I am going to add some of this lime, this concentrated lime juice, just to bring a little bit more of that bitter flavor in. All right, she's ready to blend up, guys. Come on over here. This is going to happen quick. 
Yeah, take it slow, man. I gotta see this. Okay, okay. go for it. I wanna see this. With this hurricane, I'll start it slow. Hold on. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> We're going to use salt to rim it. So, we're going to take this, this is a traditional margarita glass, take a lime wedge, cut a slit in it, and run that along the entire edge. This is what's going to cause your salt to stick to the rim of the glass. Kind of squeezy a bit, eh? Yep. This salt is uh, oh, like, this kind salt of like a is just gorgeous, man. Mm. And like I said, you can use sugar if you're not a person who likes salt or, in this. Or a salt and sugar mix would be yeah. important. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, that's true. The raw sugar, yep. it looks really. So, a quick note. Um, if you want something kind of uh, interesting, you can take the uh, the coarse sugar and the coarse salt, kind of mix them up, use a mortar and pestle, yep. and you can bring them together. And that way, when you take that sip, you get salty and sweetness. So that's what you're looking for. You want that nice bite, that salt that's immediately going to light up the rest of those flavors. And you'll see we've just done a little disc of lime there on the edge for a little bit of garnish to make it look nice. And I'm going to put some uh, peach wedges in there. We always do it. We always show in the drink. We give you a little hint as to what's in the drink by adding it in a garnish. It's kind of the point of a garnish is yeah. to let people know what's in my drink. It's, yeah, it's it. that and then, of course, the peaches get drunk too. And the oh, peaches exactly. taste pretty good, especially this delicious. time of year. Okay, we're just going to set them on the edge there. Look at that. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Come over here. Love it. Just gonna this up. <laughs> Look at that when consistency. You get, when you know that drink, we got to show the folks on Instagram. A margarita is almost all ice. It's very viscous, and you'll see. Here we go. Look at that. It's almost like a slushy. See that consistency? Oh, oh, my gosh. Look at that. That looks so beautiful. Look at all those beautiful little flecks of the flesh that's been chewed up. That is absolutely stunning. Now, of course, peach juice doesn't typically have the uh, skin in it. So... You'll hear us say this ad nauseum. We yep. say it a lot. Why on earth? You know when you take a bite out of peach, it's juicy and it's sweet on the inside, but that skin has great flavor so too. Flavorful, so when man. you chop that up and put it in there, first of all, the color is darker. So that's a bit, oh, I love that. Look at that. That's gorgeous. The color is darker and tons more fit flavor. Bay, I'm going in here with the mule deer. We're just going to finish this up here, guys. Look at that. Beautiful. Take that to your guests. They sure are going to be happy. I don't know if we can drink these ones. They're too beautiful. Oh, no, <laughs> sure, we're definitely going to drink them. They, you got to see this. So, I'm going to take Instagram photo. So why do you, yeah, show, this is why you have to have a hot pan. You see all that developing on the bottom there? We need that. That's oh, where you, oh, it smells incredible. This is where you're going to develop flavor, folks. you got to make sure to have a hot pan. See how much I've got in here? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that around just a little bit. And then I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone, let that sear off. Look at this, that base for the black bean that's turning out beautifully as well. Wow, we're doing, uh, we're doing good. How, what are we in here? We're only, well, we're 40 minutes in. Boy, oh boy. We're having, uh, we got lots going. I still got to make a pico de gallo. You're going to love that. So my, uh, my take on the pico de gallo is, again, a Traditional wouldn't have the uh, wouldn't have the jalapeno or wouldn't or would have jalapeno wouldn't necessarily have the uh, chipotle but we're definitely gonna put the chipotle in tonight. I knew we had to try this, so I'm doing up another one. <laughs> oh, it looks so good. So you know this is a great you know if blueberries in, are in season. Yep. Why not do a blueberry? Definitely. Right? Blueberry, uh, plums, raspberry, oh, black blackberries. Berries. Think about it. So, you know, with the right techniques and the right tools, you, you can accomplish anything in the kitchen. And uh, cheers to you. Cheers to you on Instagram. <laughs> um, I wish you were here with us. By the way, if you ever want to join our studio audience, yep. we have a little studio audience, and you're in <laughs> Canada within drive. Actually, you can fly in from wherever you want on your own dime. On your yeah, on your own dime. <laughs> yeah, until until the show's budget grows. Uh, listen, 
Send us a message. We'd love to have you here. Yep. You got to try it. Hey, someone else can take the camera because I want to oh try it. That's <laughs> so perfect. That's like a bite. That's like a sip of summer. It's like a sip of summer. Mm. Delicious. Oh, we're making those this weekend. That's delicious, man. Now I get to try it. You want to try it? <laughs> I'll try it. Vicky H19, thank you very much, all you Americans. You gotta stop bringing that up. It's gonna be a sore spot eventually. I like rubbing it in. <laughs> Okay, so we got some great flavor developing here. Of course, that's what you want with the onions. They're starting to become translucent, but if they're sautéed to brown, that's really what I'm looking for. Okay, so you can see how beautiful that is. Now, back here, let's turn this over. Let's have a look at what's going on down here. Oh, my gosh. See that nice brown that's starting to develop? Now, we're going to leave this. Of course, I could, I could finish this just the way it is. We can continue to cook it, but I want to brown that. So the most important thing for me now, got that in, and I'm sitting here talking. I got to get some salt on this. So the, mo the important thing when you're seasoning is to season in layers. Make sure that as you put ingredients in, you continue to season and develop all of those beautiful flavors. Now, let's look at this. My cast iron top. So I'm going to take. Where do I, there's, oh, okay. there's my tortillas. Yeah, so once I get started, I'm going to use this beautiful cast iron piece. Uh, no, it's not quite hot yet. No, I don't have it on yet. Okay. So, uh, but the nice thing is you can use also a frying pan. And come to think of it, I'm going to show you on that grill, but I'll also show you on the frying pan so you know yeah. you can do it at home yourself, no problem. This is, now that I think about it, if, you, if you're hunting like Nate and get things done in two hours, this would be a great thing. You know, bread is easy enough to bring up to camp with you. Especially if you're hunting near home, this is an awesome thing. If you've got a mule deer down and you're quartering it out, got that meat there, slice the meat into little steaks, fire it up on the fireside, and you can do this there in camp. Do me a favor and grab my... Now, you might think that that's just ridiculous. You're like, I'm out hunting, I'm not going to make this. <laughs> but uh, grab the spicing. I'll tell you some of the things we do. Uh, we've got a question. Yes, um, Megan? So people are loving the drink. Yes. Um, Okay, so Tommy, with bait, you want to grab that uh, camera? I'm going to stay here. So Tommy wants a recap. Dakota, okay. yep. give him a recap. So basically, Tommy, what we did... First of all, Tommy, let me tell you, it <laughs> tastes fantastic. We started off by making our simple syrup. And so simple syrup is simply 50% sugar, 50% water. So however much you want to make, you want to make a liter of it. It's a liter of water. Or sorry, yeah, a liter of water, a liter of sugar, and you're going to get a liter of simple syrup. Add whatever flavor you want into it. We added lime zest and lime juice into it. Let that sugar emulsify in it, and then we strained out that lime zest, and you're left with this. Here, take a look. This gorgeous simple syrup here. This needs to cool. You put it in the fridge, let it cool down, and then it's ready to go and use in your drinks. Then, we filled our blender jar about three quarters full of ice. Margaritas are typically very icy. They're almost like a slush, okay? And then we took Four ounces of uh, silver tequila. We took an ounce and a half, a triple scent. Really important to get the 100% of Yeah, 100% really, agave really tequila, important. otherwise you may... Uh, it just you may, taste. It doesn't taste as good, you may cough a little bit. <laughs> and then we took uh, juice from two fresh limes, make sure they're real juicy. We reamed those in. Fresh and that's lime where you get juice. your sour. Yep, that's where you get your sour from, is from the lime that we put in the simple syrup, plus the fresh lime juice. Then for leaving a little bit more sour, we added a little bit of uh, concentrated lime juice, about a tablespoon of it. And then we put fresh peaches. I put three fresh peaches in there. Most important, skin on. Yep, skin on. Skin on Leave because on. you have tons. First of all, that's where you get the color. Yep, see that color? That's where you get the flavor. And that's where you get that texture. That's what makes it so beautiful. Okay. And then we threw it in there, blended it all together, made sure everything was blended. We took, we put, we rimmed the glass with a uh, lime wedge. So you simply take a lime wedge, put a slit in it, run it around the outside. Make sure you squeeze a little bit so lots of juice gets on the edge. We put it in salt. You can do salt and sugar or just sugar, depending on what you like. And we took, you'll see there, we did a disc of lime there, just did a lime slice on the edge. Then we simply took, sliced some peach thinly, fanned it out, and laid it on top. Beautiful. Hopefully
that suffices, you should definitely make that this weekend. Man, yeah, it tastes delicious. <laughs> so one thing you can count on from uh, from us all the time. So Surefire Wednesdays will also have, as we said, with yep. Bailey. Bailey's always going to do the smart food. So we got to do a let's Bailey, let's do a recap. Let's talk about that, and then I'll get into some of the uh, what I've got going on here. So the recap of mine is I did a drink called the Blueberry Bone Blitz. So what I did is I really wanted to focus on getting your calcium in. You know, strong, so that's why I call it a bone blitz. That's why I call it a bone gotcha. blitz. You got strong bones. So the first thing I did is I took kale and collard greens. And I put those in the blender and then I added all these ingredients. I got dates for some nice flavors. I had some sweetness and same thing with the raisins. Threw some of those in there. Then I had about a cup of almonds and I tossed the almonds in there. Adds another, again, great flavor, great texture. Tons of calcium in these. Almonds are also a great source of protein. I actually, in this uh, drink, we got 25 grams of protein. That's like, that's literally like making a protein shake. No kidding. And then I, and then I had a, a third cup of yogurt, a full so cup of water. the Greek yogurt. The Greek yogurt. Really good for you. Blended it right up, and it turned into this. Look how gorgeous that <laughs> Dude, is. Dude, that chia is thickening in that up big oh, time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I forgot about the chia seed. The chia seed is amazing, too. Tons of omega-3 in there. Megan, we got a question? Um, so Dylan just wants to know where they can find recipes afterwards. Afterwards. Great question, yeah. Dylan. So all these recipes will be available. They'll be available. Uh, we'll post them on uh, Facebook, on The Outdoor Chef. We'll be making them available. Botech will be posting them right there on their site as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, if ever anything, uh, you know, if we ever miss anything for you, Please, you know, these uh, these days for us, and uh, we've been now going, I think, uh, 15 weeks yep. with Surefire Wednesdays, and it's such an incredible privilege to come to you. If there's anything we ever miss, let us know, and if there's anything you ever want to see, wanna also cook. let us yeah, know. That's great, yeah. So I want to show you. Now, this might be, you might think, you, you have all seen these before. This is how you take a six-pack with you to uh, keep it cool. But this is what the boys and I have done. We've taken this uh, cooler and we've turned this into our mobile kitchen. So using, uh, we use these because of course the uh, canning jars, when you seal them up, they can get wet and it's not going to damage what's inside. We have a wide range. We've got salt, star anise, cinnamon, black pepper. This is a knockoff on that old bay spice, which honestly you can put on anything. Fennel seeds, cumin seeds, allspice berries cardamom, coriander, you name it. I can get 15 in this. And that, if I take that with me, I can cook just about anything in the woods or in the backyard. Now, come on over here. Let's have a quick look at this. We've got a few things going here. So look at that beautiful texture of that. We're gonna turn that over. Let's see if we develop some nice color there. And then this for me, you'll notice whenever we're cooking, we're always gonna cook with some type of an alcohol. And the reason that we do that is that all alcohol has an element, a superior element of flavor development. I'll show you one of those. Check out one of those <laughs> from Vortex. They make great scopes and the, great glass. The Ram's horn. But beer the Ram's horn, horn uh, beer opener is Open awesome. that up at your party. Everyone will be having more beer just because they want to reuse that. Thing. So the first thing, the reason we use alcohol, first of all, is because there's flavor. So we've got more or less, we've got a Mexican theme going. So I'm using Dos Equis. Now look at that. What's coming off the bottom there is instantaneously flavor. So all of that beautiful, now I don't know, if, um, I'll tell you something just as a side note. Um, in a professional kitchen, and let's have a look at this while I talk about it, because it's happening like instantaneously. Do you see the color of that? We're essentially creating like what would be like a, an onion stock. Now I'll tell you something. In a professional kitchen, when you want to give uh, some real robust, dark flavor and color, you will actually you can actually take an onion. Onion is one of the things you can actually burn and develop a ton of flavor. We'll actually hold it over an open flame, take that full onion, set it on skin and all, and put it right into a stock, into a soup. Incredible flavor. But this is the fun part. So we've got all the flavor in the beer, beautifully reduced now. It's cooked to perfection. And now we're going to go in, we're going to finish that up with some beer. I'm adding that. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cook that until it's essentially dry. So I'm literally going to take anything that's developed on the bottom is now going to be in that. And I'm just going to continue to cook that until it's almost completely dry. But here's the proof right here. You can see 
Look at the color of that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Now, it's time to go in with some of these beans. Now, these, these were soaked overnight. If you're using canned beans, make sure to uh, strain them beforehand. So you want to make sure to get that uh, packing liquid, that brine that it's put in. So we're, I'm going to go in, oh my gosh, these beans, I'm just going to love these beans. I love black beans. There's nothing like the texture. Full of protein. I think all the food we're making tonight is, uh, is good health oh, yeah, food. Good health food. Good health food. So literally, I'm just going to take that now. A little bit of salt. Good carb load there. Exactly. A little <laughs> salt. This is the before the hike, before the hunt. Nice meal with the family before you head out for a couple of days. This is the meal you want to make. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now, this is my spicy black bean. I'm going to turn this down to low. I'm going to take that kettle. I'm going to cover that up. I'm going to let that just cook away. And now it's time to make the pico de gallo. So we're going to start with uh, some of this. So first of all, the beautiful cilantro. So cilantro is a, is a key ingredient when making a pico de gallo. So what I'll do is I'll start by putting, it's got, it's, it's incredibly bright flavored. Yeah. And what I always do literally, if I'm using a food processor, now you can do all of this by hand. You do not need a food processor. No, but for me, just chop it up fine. But for me tonight, I gotta get this done for you. So I'm literally gonna take, I'm gonna tear that top off. All of those stems that are in the upper part along the leaves, those are fine. To tell you the truth, I could probably chop these up. Yeah. But for the right texture, I'm literally I'm going to put these in. So I'm going to start with those leaves. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I never like having a big bite of onion. I don't know about you, but when I have salsa, I like the flavor of onion, but I don't want that huge bite. When I'm using onions, instead of taking and slicing the whole thing off, I only want about a third of this onion. I'm literally just going to take a side. And whenever you're working with a food processor, it really helps to break down the uh, ingredients to, you know, to a smaller size yeah. so that it'll really come up evenly. This is one of the things I love about cooking and especially working with different ingredients is just look at that. Look how beautiful that onion is and what happens in nature when this grows from a seed Let's have a look and turns this. into this. So you can see here, I want to show you how that, that beer has now completely reduced that that's the key to working with cast iron now, I'm going to turn that back burner off completely any more cooking will be done by the residual heat but that is ready to go just as it is okay so these I'm just going to cut this up Chopper and actually I will get you to do something yeah. I want to do um, you can literally just take the cores out of these and then quarter them for me you got so, a pairing now? yep right there those in, and then I'm gonna put the lime in. So, uh, as Dakota said, the uh, incredible flavor that comes in fragrance that comes from the lime zest is amazing. First thing I always do is just take and roll that lime. Rolling it'll kind of loosen it up a little bit, it'll make juicing a whole lot easier. Then, and we'll take uh, the zester. What you sure, do with there it is. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Zester. So we'll take. Yeah, no kidding. And as soon as you start zesting, that fragrance, that's unbelievable. Now, of course, you can just use the lime juice. The problem is, it won't be nearly as good without this zest. Well, the zest adds a lot of flavor. I find it almost an, it's almost a different flavor when you add the zest. Well, it's certainly more fragrant. It, yeah. it tastes great. It smells great. And of course, it's, uh, it's going to help to brighten up the other flavors and mellow them out at the same time. So zest going in. So this pico de gallo is something that uh, I've been making for a long time. This uh, a fresh salsa is good for so many things, of course, all Mexican dishes. Uh, but this also makes a beautiful topping to something as simple as chicken or fish. Like pico de gallo for me and fish. Uh, by the way, that's a nice little segue into a, a little trip we've got planned. Here, let's make it rain a little bit. Uh, a little trip we've got planned for next Wednesday, and you're not going to want to miss Surefire Wednesdays next week. Now, weather permitting, we're going to be on Lake Erie, and we're going to be fishing for pickerel. Now, one of my favorite fish. We we did a beer battered pickerel a few weeks ago, so check out the archives. It's a beautiful fish. 
And I'm telling you, we've been, we've literally been, uh, we've been at our limit by about uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. Yep. So uh, I just checked and a buddy of mine, he, had, he got a nine, not a nine and a half pounder was the biggest one today. So we're gonna look forward to showing you some of that. So the reason that I do all of this first, you'll notice I'm doing this in a specific order. I'm, taking, I'm gonna take half of a fresh jalapeno and I'm gonna take the seeds out of that as well. And what I want is I'm gonna start in the food processor with all the ingredients that I essentially want to be the smallest. So I would like a different texture. I like a little bit of the tomato completely pureed. And I like some of the pieces that are a little more chunky. I don't know about you, but I like that texture like, when I'm eating I like too. Chunkier I don't want baby food is what no. I'm saying. I like, uh, I like salsa. Like I, personally, if, even if I use a food prep processor, I'll leave a cup of tomato stand and chop them up a little bigger so you have a nice big chunk or two every once in a while. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna take a couple of these. So I'll take, let's say three full tomatoes. I got a dozen. Uh, so first of all, like, are you looking at that color? It's absolutely beautiful. Um, the other thing is I want to put in the uh, adobo sauce as well as that uh, chipotle. I want to put that in at this time because I want that really pureed. There's that beautiful adobo sauce. You can see that there. How hot do you want this? Let's go, what, three? Oh, no. What's Mom. Cindy saying? Mom's like two. Mom's okay. Two. Mom, Mom, Mom says two, so we're going to go with two. And, uh, okay, we'll do actually uh, one more tomato here as well. So let's go over and we'll start with this. So on the food processor, now keep in mind, as I said, it's not necessary to have a food processor, but in this case tonight, it's supposed to make it easier. <laughs> I popped it out. We will get it in. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do this. Get it in. There we go. So with all of those ingredients in, the smell is just incredible, and uh, it's extremely fresh. You know, this time of year, of course, tomatoes, field tomatoes can be bought, and field tomatoes elevate this to something really special. Now, what I'm going to do, start off by doing is pulsing, because what that does is that throws the ingredients up, and they drop back down, allowing you to get a nice, even mix. Look at the way that's coming together. Now remember, this one I want almost completely pureed. This is basically going to be like the base for the rest of the salsa. Let's check this over here, Code, and see how we're making out. So this is perfectly finished now. That's completely ready. Let's have a look. This is a lot. Oh, look at that. Cooking together nicely. I'm actually just going to give that a little bit of a stir here. Let's see what that's doing underneath. Oh my gosh, you looking at that? Look at that beautiful juice being rendered there. That liquid's coming out. I want that to dry up quite a bit because I want to be able to put that on the quesadilla without it getting soggy. So that means I'm gonna leave that lid off from here on in. Let that reduce a little bit. How are we doing over there, babe? Okay, you can bring those over here. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. So you can see that's essentially the base for my pico de gallo. Now it's important for me to get a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna put this in, go ahead and put those in. It's really important also to not overfill the uh, food processor so that it doesn't, uh, so it can fall down as you pulse it. We're going into full production here. Okay, that's good. I love that. Oh yeah, it looks good. And we'll do another one here. As you can see with Surefire Wednesdays, it's really important for us to make all of these recipes in real time. Making them in real time shows you how, how easy it is to make really good food fresh, with fresh ingredients, and in not a lot of time. If I'm doing this while I'm talking with you, imagine how quickly you could do it at home. And the nice thing is about doing a batch like this is that you can make enough for a couple days, certainly enough this will hold for uh, three or four days in really great condition and be beautiful. Whether you're cooking chicken or fish or even if you're having a little bit of uh, leftovers from the Southwest. <laughs> 
So one of the things you really want to make sure, if it's at all possible, if you have the time, is to make sure to bring this together maybe an hour beforehand. As you, if you bring this together an hour beforehand, all of these flavors are going to have a chance to come together beautifully. Bay, I'll get you to just stir that for me, buddy. Yeah. And then we are going to get into production here. The last thing I want to do is I want to put together a spice mix. And this is one that I really, really love. So we're going to start off with all of these beautiful spices. Um, now, all of these, I have a tendency to always grind my own spices, to toast them and to grind them. I get so much better results in terms of flavor. And I'll go through these with you in just a moment. Taste test. Taste test. So it's gonna, you're going to need uh, salt. There's no seasoning in it yet. Uh, check for seasoning. And how's the uh, lime? Good. Yeah? It's hot. Fine. It's hot? <laughs> Good. So, of course, if you don't like it spicy, then what you can do is just eliminate the chipotles. You can also eliminate or limit the amount of jalapeno that you put in. So let's start putting this together. And this is really important for me to show you how simple it is to make your own. This is essentially a taco seasoning. So we're gonna start, we've got uh, the ancho chili. So this ancho chili, so here's another ch uh, pepper test. Ancho chilies are poblanos, fresh poblanos that have been smoked. So here we've got this beautiful ancho chili. So that it smells amazing. So I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons of ancho in there. And then I've got cumin, which I just love. We'll put about the same amount of cumin in there. Uh, that's better now. Good? Oh, yeah. Good. Good. And then we're going to put some coriander. All of these have been toasted fresh and then, uh, and then ground up. Mortar in a pestle, or you can use, and I've got a little bit of paprika here, so we'll put about a teaspoon of paprika. Beautiful. And then this is ground garlic and what I use is I actually use garlic flakes uh, beautiful California garlic flakes and that's onion and just a little bit of cayenne you don't need very much little goes a long way so this I'm now just gonna mix this up you can see how beautiful that is and this would smell and taste like a very classic taco seasoning but this is what really makes Mexican cuisine superior is their attention to detail when it comes to the spices, especially when it comes to their peppers. So, I'm gonna take in some of this. This is gonna go directly into the meat. I'm gonna season that, so it's gonna go directly in. Soon as that hits that, my goodness, it already starts to smell so incredible. And, you know, we don't wanna mask the flavor of this beautiful mule deer. Keep in mind, this could be mule deer, this could be black bear, this could be whitetail, this could be elk. Anything that is, uh, you know, any, any wild game that you have, this would be a perfect fit for. So I've got this now, it's starting to heat up nicely. So this is the key. We're gonna take a little bit of oil, start by seasoning the pan. You wanna make sure that you've got lots of beautiful uh, oil on there. I'll just take a brush back. You can see that that pan is hot. We'll just want to take a minute, make sure that it's perfectly seasoned. That way, we won't have anything sticking, and that way, it'll be sure to get lots of beautiful color. What do you think, babe? Oh, nice. Smells good, eh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You can smell even the flavor in olive oil alone. Yeah, it's so just gorgeous. So we'll start building. We start, that goes down. Now, the glue, we've got some cheddar here. So I've got uh, so a little bit of aged cheddar. You can use jack cheese, whatever you like. Now keep in mind that it's the cheese that's the glue. Holds, want, everything, together. holds everything together. So that goes on first, and then we're going to start with some of this gorgeous mule deer. Are you looking at that? Look at that, eh? Looks oh almost my like gosh. shredded. Oh you know, my like gosh, full so good. Almost. It smells so good. It's going to be such beautiful texture. Now, you're going to want to pile this a mile high, but keep in mind, you got to flip this baby. So you got to make sure that you don't end up wearing these ingredients. Then for me, these beans. Oh, yeah. So, oh, my God. Smell, smell. smell the jalapenos. Oh, my oh, gosh. They smell ooh. so good. So literally put some of these beans on. Oh, Incredible. my gosh. It looks so good. 
so good. Now, let's get, we want to brighten this up. We want a little bit of freshness. So I'm going to take, and let's just do a, a nice spring onion. So we'll just slice this just like this. A little slower for those of you who can't cut like that. <laughs> My and we'll take that. We, the reason we do them nice and thin like that is you don't want too heavy a bite, but you see how beautiful that is? That's absolutely incredible. You know what I want in there too? Let's put a little bit of, let's put just a bit of this in here. Just a bit, right? This building, building, building flavors. We're going to put this on the outside, but we're going to put a little bit on the inside as well. So you don't want to hide those flavors from that beautiful mule deer. But one of the things about serving wild to table is you want to make sure that it's palatable for everybody. You want everybody to fall in love with Wild to Table the way that we have. So now the next layer of glue. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. Throw some heat on there. Next layer of glue. And don't, don't be shy with the cheese. And the more, di you know, the different types of cheese, the more you can use, the better it will be. Because it'll just give you a ton of flavor. Six cheese quesadillas. Exactly. Now you're talking. So then the other one on top. Now a lot of times I've seen people making quesadillas and what they do is they make half and then fold it over, okay? I like We did them at our restaurant this way. I love doing them this way. You can see 360 degrees of what's in this and all you have to do is on top and just drizzle a little bit of the oil. Keep in mind if you're thinking, oh, it seems like a lot of oil. All the excess oil, it just stays on the pan, not to worry. And then if you can, get yourself one of these babies. It's uh, relatively inexpensive. And when it comes time, you just check on it, make sure it's doing good. But you can do the same thing in one of the regular pans as well. So while that cooks up, I just want to show you this. Now this is completely, almost completely reduced. You can see this beautiful flavor there. Now, I'm going to turn this off. Now keep in mind, if you're serving a large group of people, one of the great things about using cast iron is that it'll stay hot, it'll yeah. keep warm. Even after keep you turn serving. it off. Exactly. Yeah. So let's do a bit of a recap. Um, if, you, uh, if you joined us late, we got a beautiful smart food smoothie that Bailey made. It's yep. full of bone, bone strength food. and Calcium. bone food. That's right. Yeah. And then Dakota's sour peach margarita. Well, we went to margarita because tequila is the key ingredient. Of course, tequila made from the agave grown in the deserts of Mexico, yeah, we right alongside. Mexico. Yeah, that's right. We went south of the border. And then the quesadilla for me is the perfect vehicle for just about any food. Certainly for any wild game because you can add beautiful flavor to it and it makes it so simple. So you can see here we've got the cheese starting to bubble along nicely there. Now one of the things you want to watch with the tortillas is they have a tendency to get away from you a little bit. Are you ready for this? Look at me. Are you ready for this? Let's have a look. So it's quesadilla time. Okay, so now I could have left that, I just saw this corner, I could have left that a little longer, but you know what, I'm not going to worry about that, because I, when the other side is perfectly done, I'm going to turn it over and crisp up that side just a little bit as well. Now, before we leave, does anybody have any, any questions about any of the recipes we've done today? If you don't, then what I'd encourage you to do is to visit the Botech.com uh, a website where you can see all of our previous broadcasts. You can see where we've cooked black bear, we've cooked wild turkey, help me out here. We've cooked oh, duck, we've done pizza, yep. we've done so many different things that we absolutely yep. love. And to tell you as well, we've got some really exciting hunts coming up this yep. fall. Um, we're looking at... Uh, Our first one is uh, September 5th is opening for black bear here in Ontario. So the last thing we were hunting was actually black bear, but we're back at it again for fall black bear. Bailey's up to take his first shot with his bow. Yeah. I mean, he's pumped for that. And then right after that, we have duck and goose. Yep. And then we're on to whitetail, guys. Yeah. So the key is, the last time we went, uh, when we were at bear camp, we were so keen to come live to you because we had a beautiful set. We were yeah. going to cook it live. Hunt it, cook it. We've got new technology. We've got we got antennas, baby. We can go and we can reach you. We believe we'll be able to reach you in so many different locations. Yep. So we were at camp last week. 
will be on the boat next Wednesday. Yep. We're going to be bringing you live cooking, live catching of the beautiful yep. pickerel. You're yep. going to see why we love Lake Erie. Yep. The sun rises, the sun sets, the clarity of the water is yep. truly one of our greatest assets. Yeah, I mean, don't get annoyed with us that day, guys. We're going to come live to you a lot because we want you to experience it with us, man. We're going to show you everything from... Getting on the boat, seeing the sunrise, catching the first fish of the day, you know, you know how exciting that is, your first fish of the day. And then you know afterwards. About fishing? Yeah, we're gonna have a yeah. shore lunch, guys. And maybe it's for surefire, so it's gonna yeah. be a shore dinner, but it's gonna be something else. It'll be beautiful. Yes, Megan. Dylan asked, can I go bear hunting with y'all? You know I mean, what we I mean, do. think about that. Yeah. I was actually just looking into that, Dylan, because I was looking into it for a few friends of ours from the US. Um, and they can't come moose hunting with us. You can come whitetail hunting. White we're, we're looking into doing that, giving maybe a few of those away. Yep. And, but I'll have to look into black bear. Maybe we can. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Hopefully we can. So, yeah. uh, as always, uh, we want to take a moment to thank uh, the most, most important people in our life, and that's the people sitting behind the cameras. Uh, my beautiful wife, Cynthia, my kids. Uh, Megan for always yeah. uh, sticking with My us girlfriend. here, uh, <laughs> his girlfriend. Uh, to Alicia, who I know is watching at <laughs> home, Charlie and Finley, my granddaughters, uh, to Grace, Blake, and everybody else, Blair and uh, Cody, we love you all. We thank you. Um, we thank for thank you all the more than dozen locations where yep. we went live tonight. We're so grateful for the opportunity to bring these yep. to you. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you want to uh, want to see us cook in the kitchen. But uh, as always, yep, it's, yep. we've used up our time. It's time to say good night. So we appreciate uh, all the time that you've given us. Uh, just a quick reminder, uh, don't forget tomorrow at 12 noon uh, Pacific, uh, Rihanna's going to be coming to you with some yep. trail food. I saw her with a dehydrator. Looks like she's got some great <laughs> ideas. And don't forget about Nate's antelope, right? That footage, we'll be able to see that tomorrow, right, Dakota? Yeah, tomorrow see that. Morning. yeah, tomorrow morning, don't miss that. Remember, I'll leave you with this. Text WATCH to 313131 in the States. If you want to be notified the moment we go live, or 393939 here in Canada. We want you to watch. We'd love to hear from you. We really appreciate you watching. Have a great night. And until next week, we'll see you then. Okay, hold on to that one.